Hello everybody and welcome to my top 5 tips on how to improve your dunking skills in Golf Clash the game. I know a lot of players have been waiting for this for a long time and you have probably seen me dunking not just one but several shots in tournament and also in tour play. And the reason I can do that is because I do have a great feeling for it. And there is certain situations where I always dunk, there is also certain situations where I never dunk. And I'm going to cover all from, you know, all from, you know, the basics to a little advanced one, advanced thing that I also think is going to help you when it comes to adjusting for normal shots as well. So I'm going to uh, talk about five topics. I call it topics, even though it's tips, but all of them obviously are tips. And it's going to be educational form. First, when should we dunk? You know, I think that's a question a lot of players asking themselves because they don't want to risk the rough, they don't want to risk the sand, and especially not risking the water if that's in play. Second one is how to position your aim. Like, how do we know where to position ourselves? Shouldn't we just put the ball guideline at the pin and then go for it? Nah, it's not really that simple. The third one is dunking from around the green. Okay, should we, you know, why should we dunk around the green and, uh, and you know, uh, that much as I do? You know, I might not do it with a wedge all the time, but I do it with a rough iron and sandwich all the freaking time. Because... In my opinion, you have a much higher probability to get that ball to drop than not. How to adjust for a dunk? Getting into the key, like, or the whole thing when it comes to adjusting for a dunk. Like, all from, you know, and the adjustment, all from, you know, the position, everything. How to complete a dunk and how to adjust for it. Should we just do what we normally do, use the normal ring system? Or, you know, what should we freaking do? And then the last one, and I think this is a this is a big one, and that is always be centered into the adjustment ring. So even though you don't crack the ring when you are pulling back to take your shot, you can still have an unintentional curl on the power or over power. And we're gonna talk through that because that's not going, just gonna help you when it comes to your dunking skills. It's also going to help you when it comes to taking regular shots and being able to get a more consistent. Uh, type of play when it comes to your golf clash game in the end if you do have any questions let me know in the comment section below you can get training sessions one-to-one -one with me on patreon.com slash golf clash tommy if you do want to take it to the next level also get the best tournament and tour play text guides on golf clash patreon.com slash golf clash tommy website golf clash tom.com for more content and also don't forget to join our discord where you can interact with fellow community members you know, enough talking about this. I think we all are just excited to get through. So let's go to tip number one. Tip number one, I like to call, uh, when should we go for a dunk? I think that's kind of like a common question for many of us. When should we go for a dunk and when should we not? First and foremost, it all depends on two things. It depends on what type of hole we're playing, like what type of green we have to play with, combined with what club we're having. First and foremost, if you do play with a short iron or a long iron or wood club for that matter, but as we are focusing more or less on our short iron here, I would say using a club that does not have more than three bars of backspin, then you should never go for a dunk in my opinion. Because the problem with that is that if you miss your dunk, which is gonna happen, it happens to everyone, and then you will bounce over the green and most likely end up into the rough. And you should never go for a dunk when as the end result of a miss could potentially be that you're outside green fairway and into the rough or into the sand. So never dunk if that's going to be just if it's just a 1% possibility, never go for a dunk in that type of situation. Also, when it comes to going with clubs with backspin, like the Thorn, for example, which has a lot of backspin, we always go with max backspin to get the ball to stop. So even if we miss, we're going to be you know, close to the pin. But there is all one other thing as well that we need to think about, which is, you know, as I said in the beginning, the green area. So look at this hole here as, a, as on the picture. 
we know that if we're gonna miss our dunk here now, we are going to get the ball to stop. This is also a picture without any spin added, but we will be getting the ball to stop. And as a worst case scenario, if we do hit the pin, which also can happen many of the times, the ball is going to roll out to the fairway, not into the rough. But let's pretend that we're playing on a hole, which there is many of them in Golf Clash the game, where the rough is very close to the green or the pin, you know, I rephrase myself. Let's say that the pin stands very close to an obstacle. And you should always have in mind that you can hit the pin and you can bounce away. And with the backspin added or just the speed in itself that the ball is having when traveling towards the pin, could potentially then bounce you into the rough or into the sand. That's also a position or like a situation where you should never go for a dunk. So you should, or like you could, is the uh, correct phrasing. You could go for a dunk when you have an open green area, like the one on the picture, combined with having a club with more than three back bars of backswing to be able to get the ball to stop in time. Those are the two key elements when it comes to deciding if you're gonna go for a dunk or not. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable going for a dunk, you should never go for a dunk. But otherwise, this is a good way to start because it's a risk-free. If you miss, then you miss and you're still gonna save yourself with a short wedge or with a putter. So for the next section here, we are going to take a look at how to position our aim. And this is as crucial as every other part here. And this is something I do believe a lot of players having a problem with because it's not common to look at anything else than the ball guideline when we're putting our target at the pin. You can see that we now have a very zoomed in picture and this is actually where I'm at when I'm zooming in to position myself for a dunk. I zoom in a lot and you need to do that. You can't just eyeball having it zoomed out then you're gonna be off. So you need to zoom in a lot for whatever device you're playing on so you can see one thing. And that's not the ball guideline, that's the blue arrows. And I hope you can see the blue arrows on the picture here and if you don't I'm gonna open up this picture instead where I've been making some really excellent circles <laughs> around the blue arrow. So, the blue arrows is gonna follow your adjustment wherever you go. The more you zoom in, the bigger those are going to be. The more you zoom out, the, the, you know, the smaller they are going to be. You should always go with the blue arrows at the back end of the cup, which is going to mean that the ball guideline is going to be dropping down at the pin. Let's pretend that you would be going with the blue arrows and putting that as a position at the pin. Then you're going to most likely go short every single time when you're dunking, if you're adjusting properly, we'll say. And then you're going to you know, bounce before, hit the pin, roll out, and stuff like that. Let's say you aim behind the cup with those blue arrows, you're gonna risk hitting the pin directly and get this massive kickback, which is very dangerous many of the time. So with your aim, you should always be at the back end of the cup with the blue arrows. That's going to be your position. So let's take a look at this short video here where I do demonstrate um, when it comes to zooming in you know first and foremost obviously we need to look at where we are in terms of distance and here i'm going with a quick adjustment thinking we're gonna play this one uh in between min and mid which now obviously should have been medium distance you see here i zoom in i'm focusing on the blue arrows look at the ball guideline here now the ball guideline is actually showing that we are bouncing at the pin and a little bit above it but the blue arrows they're at the back end of the cup now I do make a normal adjustment as I normally do and then it's time to take our shot. Now unfortunately we go short but that has done nothing to do with our position. It has to do with that we are adjusting the wrong numbers. But you can see we are dead on straight at the target and if the adjustment would be a little bit off uh, like a little bit better then it would be also better. But you can also see the fact there that we're using max backspin as to go back to the first uh, section that we're talking about you know, uh, when should we dunk? That was the same hole and we ended up on the fringe, which makes, once again, a risk-free dunk. So, always look at the blue arrow to be at the back end of the cup for the best possible position when you're going for a dunk. One thing that I'm doing more and more and more nowadays is that I'm dunking when I'm very close to the green. Meaning, when I'm on the fringe, when I'm in the rough, very close to green, or I'm in the sand, 
it close to the green. And why do I do that? And I get a lot of questions for that. It's because it's often is great proofed. Because when we are closer to the pin, the ring, rings are smaller, which means that it has less effect, you know, when we do hit a great ball, so the wind is not going to affect it as much, or, you know, even with a lower accuracy level club, it's still being um, a possibility to get those shots to drop. Because for me, I'm terrible from the rough and the sand, it's like especially sand, but I've been dropping so many great ball shots by just going for a dunk instead. Because it's the same type of structure when we're going for a dunk from short range. Look here, we are from the fringe here now. The ball is not gonna be affected much um, in the air because we're not gonna have the ball fly that much. Same structure, max backspin all the time. And then the, uh, the blue arrows back end of the cup, and you can see I didn't even move my target, okay? So in the end, with those these type of short ones, you're gonna notice that I hit a bad great left here as well, and we're still gonna get this one to drop. Sure, the wind had a little effect with that as well, but at the same time, you know, a great ball, which were close to good, is not going to go in if we get the ball to roll down towards the pin. So therefore, it could be better to go for a dunk and just rely on the first, like the first time the ball bounces into the ground that it's then gonna drop in the hole. It's also one thing when you have, uh, we can take this one again rolling in the background, it's one thing as well uh, when it comes to having a lower level ball guideline. Let's say you have a 3.5 ball guideline, you don't have the ball guideline with the rollout as a Nirvana is having in a high level or an off-road or any other a rough iron for that matter. So that's why I also think it's going to be very valuable to dunk from close range and it's going to maximize or like yeah it's going to higher your percentage in drops and you're going to not have to think about the secondary bounce wind effect. You're not going to have to think about much more than just that hit great. Sure if you hit good or anything or if you hit a bad great with a very high win then sure. So always try to at least you know move your target a little bit so so you do adjust a little bit for the win but you know with a wedge with a five miles per hour you don't have to move it outside the cup anything. I wouldn't do that until I have it like at least 15 miles per hour or something like that which also is super duper helpful. So let's talk about how to adjust for a dunk. I think it's important to just say that you shouldn't do anything special to what you are already doing, meaning that there are so many players out there that are complicating things by thinking, hmm, okay, when I'm going for a dunk, I might need to, uh, you, now, now I might need to adjust way differently than I normally do. And you don't. And I'm gonna try to just easily show you this before we are moving on. First and foremost, always use max backspin. Have that as per default, because once again, if you miss the cup, you do want the ball to stop. And I've already talked about that a bunch in this video. And then it, I do think the most important part after this is that now we're not going to adjust for any secondary bounce wind effect. So for an example, if you're using any tool like the wind assist tool on Golf Clash Notebook, you need to shut that down because in the end, we are not going to adjust for the secondary bounce wind effect for an example. And the reason we're not gonna do that is because we're gonna shoot directly to the hole. We're not gonna shoot so it bounces and bounces and bounces and then we go to the hole. That's, I think, that I think is the most important part with it all. And I'm gonna show you here when it comes to Clash Caddy application that for an example, if you're gonna play maximum, or like if you are in maximum distance of your club and you're gonna play uh, uh, every, uh, with an eight mile per hour and we play with 10% over adjustment and we play with a thorn, then we're gonna play with 5.1 rings in adjustment, as you can see there on the table. And you know, that's how easy it's going to be. So don't complicate it, use the same numbers, but scrap the part where you're thinking about what's gonna happen after the first bounce because that's not really going to have any uh, any thing to do with how you're going to adjust for the shot in general. So just think about you want the ball to land where you're aiming. That's the only thing that counts. 
and therefore adjusting for a dunk is going to many of the times be easier as again you are not going to have to think about what happens after the first bounce with a 10, 12, 15 or 5 or 8, you know, whatever, headwind, crosswind uh, or tailwind for that matter. And when it comes to the adjusting for a dunk, one thing that I want to mention as well is that I would strongly recommend to not dunk any club when it's close, uh, when it's above medium distance because adjusting rings when we're zoomed in that much is going to be much easier if we have uh, lesser rings to adjust for. So for an example, with the thorn in minimum distance, we're playing two and a half rings, medium distance 3.8 rings. And I think 3.8 rings is the cap here and it comes to adjusting for our club. Uh, every time when we have more than five rings, I would strongly advise you against dunking because then you might have to do two pulls in very zoomed in position to get it correct and then it's very very hard also one last final thing that is also very important is the wind arrow the wind arrow should always be pointing straight north when you make your pull not an 1159 or 1201 screw pull angle thoughts in that regard always pointing north when you pull your rings but be very focused on it because even if you think it it's straight up wait a couple of ticks so you see that the wind uh, and wind arrow is completely straight up to north so here you have a couple of things on how to think about when you uh, on how to adjust for the dunk now this may be look weird but this is one of the bigger reasons and this is going to be a solution to many of you players problem when it comes to going for a dunk or for that matter going for a normal shot as well so i think this is gonna cover them both and this is what i would like to call always be centered in the adjustment ring and what i mean with that is like when we're going to pull back to take our shot we always need to focus to be centered and i'm gonna before we going through the pictures we're gonna take a look at once again this shot here with a wedge. Look what I do into the adjustment ring below and this is basically just to demonstrate. I obviously don't go uh, to all under power or over power and curl but every time you're not centered into the adjustment ring that's gonna affect your outcome of the shot. You see now I'm centered I'm going up, that's under power, that's over power and then we're gonna go to curl. You see that the ring still doesn't crack so it's very easy to miss and that's why you should be extra focused on having the ball centered into that adjustment ring. Because let's take a look at the, the, the pictures here. If you do have it like this, then you are unintentionally overpowered your shot, which means you're going to have a little bit more distance than you are accounting for. If you're going to have this picture, you see that you're a little bit more to the right, which means that you're going to have an unintentional right curl. You still haven't cracked the adjustment ring in any form. Then we do have this one, and this is a classic. This is, in my opinion, a, while a lot of dunks and short wedges are missing because you underpower your shot. You have a slight underpower, but it's very hard to, uh, to uh, know if you don't know what to look for. And then the last one, of course, is when we do have a little curl to the left. Every little piece like this is going to affect your dunk and it's going to affect your normal shots as well so always put your focus on having the ball centered into the adjustment ring i cannot stress enough how important this is going to be if you're going to be managing doing good dunks but also managing replicating your own shots in a better way to not get different wrestle because you are missing this little key piece here for being centered into the adjustment break. So there we do have it ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching my top 5 tips and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something and most especially if there is anything that you thought sounded just completely weird or it's something that you might want to dig into a bit deeper then you can always message me tomilofberg at gmail.com link or like email is in the description down below you can also use a contact form on our web site and i understand here now that this is not going to just make you the, the dunk master you still need to practice so i would recommend that you take a friend go and play you know friendly games it doesn't cost you trophies and you can go to tour one as a start and just go dunking i had 
one of my better friends called Brandon, which is, uh, he is the sole reason to why I can dunk today. He uh, told me that, okay, Tommy, I want you to start dunking. It's awesome. I said, no. And then he took me and we played friendlies for two hours and just tried to dunk every single shot. You couldn't hold out without doing a dunk. And after that, I was hooked and I learned so much of just practicing, of just taking the shot, uh, all from lineup to adjustment and everything. And then that stuck. And now I love it and it has improved my game immensely. So a big, big uh, thank you to my buddy Brandon for putting me into uh, the the dunking <laughs> the, the dunking section of golf clash, but in the end, you know, thank you so much once again for watching and good luck in your golf clash game